Greetings AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. Very excited to dive in to topic 9.7, which begins a series of three topics that will focus on polar coordinates and polar equations and how they relate to calculus. There's going to be a lot of videos coming up with these three particular topics and the reason is very clear. Polar coordinates and polar equations with calculus is one of the roughest parts of the AP Calculus BC exam. The free response question that focuses on polar that's typically seen each year is one of the more difficult problems that has some of the lower scores. Um, and a lot of that, it comes from a lot of different reasons. Uh, some of it is just a fundamental misunderstanding of polar coordinates that, that stems from your trigonometry class. And then, of course, that kind of proliferates into some misunderstandings when the calculus comes into play. So that's why you're going to see a lot of videos here initially, about five or so, that are just going to review the polar coordinates, polar equation concepts to get you ready so you can handle the calculus. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at plotting some polar coordinates. So our topic 9.7 begins with this idea of, hey, here is our new polar coordinate plane. Like the xy axis, it's a little bit different. It's our polar axis, and it consists of some very important features. Uh, one of them is this idea of this thing called the pole, which would be this center point right here. Sometimes we might refer to that as the origin. That's what we call it in the rectangular plane, xy, but we typically call it the pole. And the polar axis is going to be this horizontal line right here that extends to the right that sort of is like our old-fashioned x-axis or positive x-axis. And so we think of that now as our polar axis. So what do you do to identify a coordinate in the polar coordinate plane? Well, as you can see right here, a point can be located by giving it a coordinate name of r, theta. The R, of course, stands for radius. The theta stands for angle. And the radius is just simply a measure of how far you are from the pole. And the theta is just a measure of the angle that's being made with the polar axis. It's really that simple. A lot of the details here you can read up a little bit on your own. I want to kind of get to the point where we can plot some coordinate points here for you. So what is it important to consider? Well, you've got to make sure that you understand that R can be positive and R can be negative, and that can be a little confusing. So let's suppose here that R is a positive number. It's what you're probably going to see most of the time. Well, then theta is just the measure of any angle that's in your standard position that has this ray OP as its terminal side. So here's our uh, what we call our pole, right? We might be able to use O for origin. We want to use P for point. So the point is R comma theta. Well, this R would just be really the length of that particular segment in our polar plane. And then, of course, the angle that's made with the polar axis is going to serve as our theta. Now, what if? This is the big what if. R being negative. Well, that simply means is that you got to deal with your theta a little differently. So you would still measure whatever theta they would provide, but instead of placing that point with that r value on that particular side, you're going to go to the um, opposite side as the terminal side. So let's say that that point would have normally been here with a, ver a certain r value. We're going to locate that point on the opposite side, and that is because that r was thought of as a negative number. It's going to move to the opposite side of the pole. We're going to see that in our very first example here. So what you got going on here is a couple of points that we are asked to plot. Notice that the coordinate grids that I will use throughout pretty much every video that I use are segmented in terms of pi over uh, six, I believe. Yeah, I had to count there for a second. <laughs> Each one of these is a pi over six. So you've got one pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, four pi over six, five pi over six, six pi over six, and obviously that is incorrect because I'm tricking you. I'm making sure you're paying attention. They're pi over 12, my friends. Each one of these is a pi over 12, which is probably going to give us 
a lot more detail than what we possibly need. Now if I count 1 pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, that's pi over 4, right? 4 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12 is our pi over 2, which is what we would normally attribute as being up here for that 90 degree angle. So you want to get used to that convention. And I will oftentimes call these spokes, like spokes on a bicycle tire. These concentric rings that you see here are typically going to have a scale of one unit unless otherwise stated. So in this particular case, what I typically do is I will look at the angle first. Even though it comes second in the coordinate point, I will find it first. So 7 pi over 6 would be, well, let me think here, that's the same thing as a 14 pi over 12. And if we think about getting there, if we arrived onto this side, that would be a pi value, right, which is the same as 12 pi over 12. So 13, 14 pi over 12 would take us this direction. So this is where 7 pi over 6 would normally be located, yes. However, because my pole, or I'm sorry, my radius is negative 1.5, I need to go backwards. I need to go this direction, and I'll go one concentric circle and half of another, and that's where that point P is going to be located. Notice that I went the opposite side here of the pole because of the negative value. Now if we take a look at part B, we're graphing a positive R value, this time albeit with a negative angle theta. Well, you would measure the negative angles pretty intuitively. You're just going to work in a clockwise direction from that polar axis. So if you remember, each one of the spokes is, I won't mess it up this time, pi over 12. So 1 pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, which is the same as pi over 3, can be now thought of as negative if we move this direction. And if you're wondering, is that the same as 5 pi over 3? Yes, it is. They are one and the same, two different ways to mention it. Now, since my radius is positive, I will actually move towards that particular value on that spoke and not worry about going to the other side. And so this will serve as our point Q. There you have it. You've graphed your first two polar points.